Hello, welcome to this lesson in Mastering Statistics. We're going to talk about the standard normal distribution. Now let me kind of give you a little background here. We've talked about the normal probability distribution. We've talked about why it's important. And most of all, we've talked about the fact that the area under the bell curve, the area under the normal distribution, is really how you end up calculating your answers and finding your answers. We said the area under the whole thing is just equal to one. And the area of any little chunk is going to end up being how we solve a lot of these problems. And we're kind of giving you a taste of that. But we also said um, that when we calculate those values, we could use the actual equation and we could use calculus to find the areas, but that's cumbersome. We don't really want to do that. We'd like to use the table of values that are given in the back of almost every statistics book ever printed. All right? If you go and look in your Appendix A in the back of whatever textbook you're using, you'll see uh, what we call uh, a table for the normal distribution. And it kinda, I'll show you how to use it. Basically, it lets you calculate these areas. But the problem is, you see, um, remember that the normal distribution, the shape of it, is dependent upon the mean and the standard deviation. So let's say I have a problem with watermelons, and I tell you the mean is 20 inches and the standard deviation is 5 inches. right? And then let's say in another problem, I'm doing something with the height of adults in, in North America, and their height is, you know, average is 60 inches, and their standard deviation is 15 inches. So you see those two different problems, they're both using normal distributions, so we want to use the same table in the back of the book, but one of them has a totally different mean and a standard deviation than the other one. So how do we calculate areas under both of these curves when both of the curves are totally different shapes? And some, one might be short and, and squishy, one might be tall and peaked, but we both know they have the same general shape, but we want to use the single table in the back of the book. The answer is we create something called the standard normal distribution. The standard distribution is the one that's printed in the back of the book, the one that's tabulated with the areas. And what you need to do is when you solve your problems, what you end up doing is kind of converting your problem into a standard distribution. Then you can look the answer up in the back of the book. Because otherwise, see, there's infinite different shapes and sizes of these normal distributions. I could have a mean of 20 million and a standard deviation of 10,000 if I'm talking about the diameter of a star or something. Well, if I, if I want to calculate area under that curve, it's going to be a totally different table than if I'm talking about watermelons. You see? So what we do is we create the standard distribution and we use that for all of our problems and we just have to do a simple little conversion in order to be able to use the table in the back, but it's very, very simple to do. That's what we, the motivation of why you need a standard normal distribution. All right? So what would be a standard normal distribution? What is it? Well, there's a couple of different things you need to know. 